they, the people who like yeah, go sit down beside him and talk shit to him. And my heart beating fast like a motherfucker because you you don't never know what people kind of time people on. So I go and sit down and talk shit. By that time, fucking Marco come in and they clapping and shit. So I get up and fucking Marco like hell now nah, sit your back down. And that gets how that shit went. Mm-hmm. We went and it just happened the way it happened. Wow, that was a good episode. And, and Basketball, you just be talking shit. I know this, you You just be talking shit. A lot of people I'm not emotional because like I'm talking. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. Yeah. So, man, you know, um, just being on the side, you know, you when you first started out, you know, you've done everything. You've done the comedy. You know, you done now. Now you with with the podcast and with the way you guys have put that together. Well, you know, you talked a little bit about it last time you was on the show in Houston. But just give us a little spiel on how you even came up with that concept and even dealing with that. Man, I would just uh, really, you know, I was just gonna really just put up. You know, a regular podcast up and, and do that, and I was doing that. You were doing it. I was doing that, and it was doing some good numbers. I loved it. But uh, I always think bigger. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I would with my mind building something to where I can really get the the sports people to come in and sit down and, and chat with me. Not only them, other people as well in the culture. So um, I had been talking to this guy. His name. Shout out to Matt Abel. Um, I had been talking. Me and him been friends for like three years, and because we've been talking about putting a show together for so long, and it finally made sense. So I reached out and uh, I went up there and um, I did an interview with uh, Funny Marco. Okay. And mm-hmm. it's the same day uh, Dwight Howard was there. I, re- I remember. I seen that after I you came on because it hadn't dropped yet. Yeah. And uh, what's so crazy about that? Like it's not scripted. So Dwight Howard was out there in the spring of the whole time. Everybody like, duh, Dwight Howard got there normally when. Somebody out there that see me, they'll come up and holler at me. But the white never came out and spoke to me or nothing. So I was handling some business. I had did a skit. And uh, I was up there shooting my own podcast. You know, I, mm-hmm. to, I paid out my own money to shoot mm-hmm. my own pilot. Because that's how I do independently. Mm-hmm. And I show you how guys work. I come out the room, the white house was sitting right here in this chair. I'm like, this motherfucker bigger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, you know what I'm saying, he's looking at me like, because his friends in the back hyping the shit up. That go dub, trash. And Dwight Howell's looking, he's like, I ought to fire your ass up. <laughs> and I said some shit to him, and he, they, the people were like, shit, go sit down beside him and talk shit to him. And my heart beating fast like a motherfucker, because you, you don't never know what people kind of time people on. So I go and sit down and talk shit. By that time, fucking Marco come in, and they clapping and shit. So I get up, and fucking Marco like, hell, nah, sit your ass back down, nigga. And that gets how that shit went. Mm-hmm. We went, and it just happened the way it happened. Wow, that was a good episode. Basketball, you just be I, I talking shit. Thing. I know this, you emotional. You just be talking shit. You emotional. I'm not emotional. Like Anthony Because I'm talking? And that's how I got my show. That, wow. The owner seen me go at it with Howard and like, man, I got to have you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just, like I said, I enjoy seeing it now just to see you on that side of the table asking the questions instead of being asked the questions. Correct. And I've seen guests from, what, Jock, uh, who mm-hmm. all been on there? You, I know you were checking him out. Mama do. Mama D. Mama D. Mama D. Uh, Mama D, uh, who else? I got Michael Black. Michael, Michael Blackson ain't dropped yet. Ain't dropped yet. Ain't I ain't seen that DJ one. DJ Drama ain't dropped yet. Damn, I ain't seen that one. Yeah, DK but it Metcalf was another one, the Jackson yet. guy. Steven Jackson. Uh, Steven Jackson. Shout out to Steven Jackson. Um, man, it was, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. When I be saying, I be like, boy, some girl, it was on there, about, it said something about sex. What was that all Suki, about? Suki yeah, Yama. I Suki saw that Yama. one. What was up with that show, man? Because oh, a lot of people man. said that, that it was a little different for you. Yeah, that was different. <laughs> I, they got to see a segment they had never seen before. <laughs> but, you know, when I did that joke, the boogie eating joke, yeah. well, y'all done been to my show. Yeah, of I course. I tell that same joke on stage. Mm. Yeah. So it was just funny how it just came out, just the way it came out. And she was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, just strictly entertainment, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and, and. What's your favorite episode so far, whether it's out or not? All of them. All of my favorite because I'm I'm blessed to do it. You know, I could be in the grave, I could be in jail, I could I could be a paralegic. You know, I could be a lot of things, but I'm, I could both eyes work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All my hands and toes work. I'm blessed to be able to interview these people, and because they got a story of their own, and to come from I'm come from from coming in here to our first interview with broke than the motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Had a vision, had a plan, but didn't know how I was gonna execute it. And she, I ain't, I can't do nothing but be thankful. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.